Hello and welcome everyone to our webinar today focused on researching in Hein Online's Session Laws Library and State Statutes a Historical Archive. During our session today, we're going to look at these two libraries in more detail, specifically looking at various search examples, including how you can search a specific state's session laws using a variety of methods, and then also how you can search across a specific state's statutes in the state statutes historical archive. So first I want to start with the Session Laws Library. So I'm going to jump over to Hein Online here. This library contains the Session Laws of all 50 states, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, and the DC Register. It also contains the Federal Laws, and these browse options you'll notice are right at the top of the page here. So by default we show you the U.S. state and territory laws and these are the 50 states, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, and the DC Register. But we also have the federal laws and the federal laws are going to include the Acts of the Parliament of Canada, Acts of the Parliament of Australia, you'll see the Bahamas in here, you're also going to find a link to the United States statutes at large, as well as the revised statutes of Canada. Now I'm going to go back to our U.S. State Territory Laws list here. And the first thing you're going to see on this page is a Session Laws Quick Locator tool. If you know the state, the year, and a specific page number to a Session Law that you're looking for, this is where you want to start. So if we look at an example, we're looking for page 1051 from the session laws in Colorado in 2010. So I can choose Colorado from the drop down. I can insert the year 2010 and I can insert the page number 1051. And when I click search, it's going to take us right to that specific page. So again, if you know the state, the year and the page number, that's the quickest way to dive right in and get what you want. Now if I go back to that page, Perhaps you might have a citation for a law that includes a chapter number. And if that's the case, then you're going to want to try to use this chapter search option, which is linked right underneath this tool here. Now with this option, again, we're going to select our state. So let's say we choose Alaska. We could insert our year, 2009, and we're specifically looking for chapter 12. So we're going to insert the chapter number 12. And we're going to click search. Now, it's important to understand here that the Session Laws Library is not indexed to the chapter or the section level. Therefore, when you search for a chapter number using this tool, the system will generate a full text search for that chapter number across the specific state and the year that you specify. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. And what we can do is use the view matching text pages from our search results here to navigate to the page where the specific chapter begins. So here we can jump right to page 1, chapter 12, and act. And based on our text ex excerpt here, this would tell me that this is the beginning of the specific chapter since the act name follows chapter 12. So if we link through to page 1, sure enough that brings us right to the beginning of chapter 12. And then it tells us section one of this act begins on page two. So if we page forward, here's the beginning. So again, if you have the chapter number, that's that chapter search tool is the best place to start. Now, as you browse through the session laws listing here, you'll notice that when you click on a state, there's a citation tool for every state inserted in the browsing list. And so if you happen to be, let's say, halfway through the list and you get to Nevada, and now you know the year and the page number, you can quickly use this tool and just insert the year and the page number and click search. And that's going to function the same as the tool at the very top where you selected the state from the drop down. Again, these are just shortcuts that we've embedded throughout the library as you navigate through the states. Now I want to move over and I want to look at our searching options. So each state organizes their session laws differently and this can make searching a bit tricky. Some states organize their laws by chapters, others organize them by an act or an act number, 
others perhaps by a public law number of the state, and so forth. Furthermore, chapters and acts can start over every year. So it's important when you're doing session laws research or research for state laws and sessions, session laws, excuse me, it's important to have key words or even a year associated with the law that you're searching for because those key words and or that date range are going to help you narrow your search. So given these factors, it's important to understand how to search for a session law across a state using different search techniques. Now before I dive right into some search examples, I want to just show you a few examples of different states and how they organize their laws differently. And I already have these open in new tabs here just to make it faster to, to access the material. So in this case, this is the, a volume from 1984 of the Massachusetts Session Laws. Now you'll notice here for Massachusetts, they organize their laws by chapters. And in this specific case, they abbreviate, so it's chapter, C-H-A-P period, followed by the number. And it's important to know this when we start searching across the Massachusetts session laws. Now if we look at another example, this, these are the session laws of Arkansas. So in Arkansas, they organize their session laws by an act number. This particular volume is from 2009 for Virginia, as we see in our table of contents here. And in this case, they organize them by chapter numbers, but in, they use the full term chapter versus the abbreviated version. And then the last example I want to show is from Indiana. And in their case, they're actually using public laws. So they use the PL prefix followed by the number and the year. So looking at those four different state session laws, that shows you the variation in how each state organizes their laws. So what I always recommend to someone who is new to searching across session laws is if you know the specific state that you want to focus in on, when you get into Hine Online, if you've never searched the session laws, take a moment from the browsing list, I'm going to go back here, take a moment from here, find the state that you're going to be researching. So if it's California, click on California, and just open a volume and take a look at the contents. By looking at the contents, it's going to give you an idea of exactly how that state organizes their laws. And that can be a huge help when you start actually formulating your searches. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's go through and take a look at some examples here. So I'm going to go to our search tab in the upper left hand corner. And the first, and then I'm going to click on field search, excuse me. And the first search that we're going to focus on is from Massachusetts, and it's a specific law from 1984. We know the chapter, it's chapter 87, and it's called an act further regulating the reporting of certain cases of child abuse. Now, if you don't know the specific year, you can use proximity searching to narrow the chapter by keywords. So in this case, based on the name of the the law, we can choose some keywords such as child abuse. And what we're going to do, we know because we looked at Massachusetts that they organize their laws by chapter and they abbreviate chapter within the text. So we're going to do open quote CHAP for chapter. The chapter number we know is 87. And we're going to choose key terms here. So we're going to insert child abuse, close the quotes. And again, we're going to do a proximity search. So we're going to do a proximity of 15. So what that's going to do is it's going to search for chapter 87 and the terms child abuse within 15 words of each other. And then I'm going to focus this specifically on Massachusetts. So from our title listing here, I'm going to select Massachusetts and click search. And that's going to bring us one result here and it's from the 1984 volume 1 Massachusetts session laws. If we use view matching text pages, it's going to link us right to the page in this volume where chapter 87 and our terms child abuse appear and that's going to be the beginning of chapter 87 for that specific law. 
So here it is. If we go back, if you know the year, you could just use the chapter number and insert the year in the date range. So if we modify our search here, we could remove the proximity and just do chapter 87, chapter abbreviated, highlight Massachusetts from our title listing, and insert the date 1984, 1984. And again, that's going to give us one result as well. Now let's take a look at another example. This time we're going to look at Virginia. Virginia organizes their laws by chapter numbers. So in Virginia's case, we're looking for Chapter 345, which is an act to amend and reenact 24.2-706 of the Code of Virginia. And that relates to elections, absentee voting, and the response to applications. And this particular act was from 2009. Again, if you don't know the year, you can use proximity searching to narrow to the chapter by the keywords. So we can do open quote. In this case, we looked at Virginia. We know Virginia organizes their laws by chapters, but they use the full-on term terminology chapter versus the abbreviated version. So we can insert chapter 345, and then we're going to insert that, that number, so 24 dot two dash seven oh six we're gonna close the quote and we're gonna look in a proximity of twenty we're gonna choose Virginia from our title listing and click search and that's gonna give us one result here and again we can use our view matching text pages to link right to the page, chapter 345, where the law begins. Okay, I'm going to do another search. This time we're going to look for Arkansas. Arkansas organizes their session laws by the Act number. And this case it's going to be Act 53, which is an act to permit the acceleration of income tax benefits for charitable cash contributions for relief of Indian Ocean tsunami victims and for other purposes. And this particular act was passed in 2005. And again, if you don't know the year, you can use proximity searching to narrow the chapter by keywords. Or if you do know the year, you could insert the year as well as the act number. So for example, we could insert Act 53 we could select Arkansas from our title listing and we could insert our date range here and click search. Now in this case you'll notice you get five results versus a more targeted single result. If we wanted to modify this, if we knew our keywords such as income tax or tsunami, we could modify this search and add a keyword. So if we do modify search, and I'm going to add keywords to the act and add the proximity. So we could say income tax and tsunami and look within 25. And that's going to narrow us down to three results. And again, you can use your view matching text pages to link to the specific act. So act 53 where it appears. And you'll have to read through the excerpts to depict where specifically Act number 53 begins. And based on this we see Act 53 and Act Permit the Acceleration of Income Tax Benefits. So based on this excerpt, this law is going to begin on page 137 of Volume 1, Book 1 in 2005. Now the last example I want to show you is Indiana because Indiana uses public laws to organize their session laws. So they use the P period, L period prefix followed by the number in the year. And we looked at this, if I jump over to my other tab here, we looked at this here. So we see P period, L period, the number followed by the year. So if we are looking for 
PL 63-2009, and that was an act to amend the Indiana Code concerning public safety. What we could do here is just simply insert PL 63-2009 and select Indiana from our title listing and click search. So here you'll notice again, you've got to use your results listing. You'll, the first one says index, the second is tables. Here is going to be the full text of the session laws for the 116th General Assembly. So if we do view matching text pages, we can read the excerpts and then link to the page where the public law 632009 begins. So that's four different examples on how you can search for session laws using proximity searching and keywords as well as the year if you know the year. Again, it's important to, to try and narrow the date range down because chapters and act numbers, they can start over year after year. So in 2008, you might have acts 1 through 100. In 2009, you're going to have acts 1 through 100. So that's why that year when you're doing research in the session laws is a pretty key piece when you're formulating your search. Now I want to move over and I want to look at the state statutes historical archive in Hein Online. So I'm going to go up here and choose state statutes. In terms of coverage, Hein Online state statutes historical archive contains the superseded state statutes or historical statutes if you will dating back to the farthest is 1717 and the coverage goes up to about 1940 and that's why we're calling it a historical archive. It doesn't include the current statutes that you're getting with your ongoing fee subscription so that's important to understand. Now when you come into this library by default we show you the browse by state option and that's what you're looking at here. From here you can click on any state so we could click on Arizona to view the specific titles that we have, the specific historical state statutes that we have by title. Now for each state you'll notice there's a quick search box, again a shortcut embedded into the browsing list and that allows you to quickly insert search terms. So in this case we could insert search terms and search across just the Arizona state statutes here. Alternatively, we can still use, if we go up to our search tab, our field and advanced search options to search across a specific state. Now, as is the case in the session laws, the state statutes are all indexed differently according to the content that's contained in each book. So what I want to do is I want to start with the basic search form, explain what's there, but then I want to dive in and explain how to utilize the description field to maximize your search and we'll do that by going through a variety of examples here. So I'm just going to click on our field search form here. Now from the field search in the drop down you've got four options. You have full text which is keyword searching. You have the description field which I'm going to go over in more detail in just a moment. You can search by a specific state or you could search by the title. Now when you choose state from this option you need to insert the whole name of the state so for Massachusetts for example you would insert the whole name of the state versus the abbreviated version now if you know the title you could narrow to one or more titles here and you can also narrow by date range now the results when they come up are going to display facets allowing you to further refine the set of results you see so just to show you how, what I'm talking about, I'm going to do a quick search here for penal code and I'm going to search across the description field. So on the left is where your facets are going to show up. So once you generate a search, you can narrow your results by a specific date range to a specific state. You could narrow it to a specific section type if you wish, if you want to look at just the index contents or the table of contents, or you could narrow to a specific title here.
So you can use those facets again to further refine find your result set. Now, what I really want to focus on is how to utilize the description field in the State Statutes Archive to search for specific things within state stat specific state statutes. Now, the description field of a document can contain a number of different things, again, depending upon the type of work that was indexed. And it's basically, the, index, the description provides a brief explanation of what type of content is included in that specific section. And the description fields may contain things such as chapter three, chapter two spelled out, you might find letters such as A or B. Letters are often found in the description fields for digests. You might see part one or title two, you might see penal code, you might see general laws. So let's look at a document to explain exactly where this description field is coming from. I'm going to go back to our collection homepage here. And we're going to just pull up a title here from Arizona. So if we look at this electronic table of contents for this title, Compiled Laws of the Territory of Arizona from 1877, each bullet denotes a section. And each section, is, in most cases, has a title followed by a description. They don't always have a title and always have a description. Sometimes they might have just a title or just a description. So how do you know what's what when you're looking at the table of contents? The title of that specific section is going to be denoted by the normal font type. So in this case, you see of the construction, publication, and distribution of statutes. Followed by that, you're seeing chapter one. And chapter one is italicized font here. The italicized font is what represents the description of this section. So we could search across these Arizona statutes by for, excuse me, chapter one. We could search for chapter two, chapter eight. So if we knew the chapter number, that's how we would narrow our search to that specific chapter. Alternatively, as we look through here, you'll see of wills, of probate courts, of marriages. If we wanted to search across all the sections related to of marriages, we could do a title search for the key term, key term of marriages or just marriages. So again, this is similar to researching the session laws. If you're not familiar with a specific state statutes, open the table of contents of a few different volumes and check them out before you dive right into searching. And that few minutes that you spend just exploring a volume or two could really be of great value as you formulate your search. Now let's look at some examples. The first thing we want to search for are statutes related to arson. And we're going to search specifically across the Texas statutes. And um, the statutes we want specifically from the, the penal code in Texas. So how would we do this type of search? I'm going to go to our search form, field search. Now the first thing we know is that we're going to search across Texas. Now unlike the session laws, we don't have individual state names in the title listing here. And that's because the title listing that you're seeing here are the actual title names of each book within the statutes archive. So what you need to do is use the state drop-down, insert the full name of the state, and then we're going to search again across that description field, and we're going to search for penal code, and then we're going to add a key term, arson, and click search. And that's going to return 22 different results from the various statutes for Texas. And again, you can see the name of the specific title. You'll see the description here, penal code. And if we use view matching text pages, you can see where they talk about arson within this specific book of statutes. Okay, now let's say we want to search for statutes about the open market in Colorado. We know specifically from our other research that this should be in Chapter 3 of the Colorado Statutes. So, 
we're going to do a new search. Again, we're going to search by state. So we're going to well, we're going to put in Colorado. And then we're going to search across that description field. We know the chapter, so chapter 3. And we're going to search for a key term here. Open market. And click search. And that's going to give us three results from the Colorado historical statutes. And again, you can use view matching text pages to link further into each of these books. Now, if you wanted to narrow it to a date range on the original search form, you could insert a date range here. Or you can, again, you can use your facets to drill down to a specific set of dates further. Okay, I want to take a look at just a couple more examples, and then after that we'll wrap up and answer a few questions. But before we do that, the next search example I want to look at is how to search across a digest. Um, a lot of the historical state statutes are in digest form. So for example, we want to search across the District of Columbia digest, and we're looking for statutes related to aliens. So we're going to search across the A part of the digest of the District of Columbia. So how would we do that? We're going to do a new search. State is the District of Columbia. In our description field, as I mentioned before, the digest, typically those description fields are the broken down A to Z alphabet indexed sections. So we can just insert the letter A for aliens here. And then in our text for our keyword, we're going to put in the term aliens and click search. So that's going to give us two results here from two different digests. And here you see that description field. And then we can link right through, let's say to page 75. And here you'll find aliens within this digest of state statutes. So again, if I pull up the table of contents for this particular digest, you'll notice each section is denoted by the, the digest letter and as the description of that section. So that's how you can really search across a digest if that's what you would like to do. Now, in the last example, what we're going to look at, if we go to field search and do a new search here, we want to search across statutes that are related to public health and we're searching for the key terms vital statistics. We don't have a specific state to start with. Um, so what we would want to do, public health, we're going to search across the title field. And then we're going to add our key terms text. We're going to add the phrase vital statistics and click search. So what this is going to do is search across all the different state statutes and it's going to search across the sections and particular, particularly all the state statutes who have a section as public health and then it's going to search for our key terms in those sections so vital statistics. Now what you can do from here, so we have 138 results on the left hand side, you can narrow down and say, you know what, show me just the Kentucky statutes. I want to focus on Kentucky. And that's going to narrow your results here to just those eight titles from the Kentucky Historical State Statutes. So you can use these facets to refine your search. So that's a brief overview of searching for laws across a specific state statutes or across a specific state session laws. Now, in wrapping up this session, again, I suggest to all new users of these databases just to spend a few minutes reviewing a few of the titles for the given state that you're going to be researching. Familiarize yourself with those electronic table of contents for that for the titles because that can really help you formulate a good search and get good results. Now before we go, I want to let you know that we've recorded today's session and it will be available on our Help and Training Web Center. So if you click on Help in the upper right hand corner and then you go to Videos and Webinars 
and click webinars. The archived recording after today's session will be available here. It'll take us some time to get that up there, up there, but this is where you can check back for it. Um, furthermore, we will send a follow-up email with a link to the video that you can view and share with colleagues and others that you feel would benefit from it. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us at any time. You can contact us here at hlsupport at wshine.com. You can contact us via phone, or you can use our live help option and chat live with a Hine Online representative, or even submit feedback using our feedback form. So that wraps up today's session. We'll stick around for a few minutes for questions. For those of you who have, don't have questions, you're free to leave. And thank you again so much for attending today's webinar. Have a good day.